This is Powered by Learning, a podcast designed for learning leaders to hear the latest approaches to creating learning experiences that engage learners and achieve improved performance for individuals and organizations. Powered by Learning is brought to you by DaVinci Interactive. We collaborate with our clients to bring order and clarity to content and technology. Learn more at DaVinci.com. Hello and welcome to Powered by Learning. I'm your host, Susan Court. With me today is DaVinci Lead Project Manager and Instructional Designer, Angeline Evans. Hello, Angeline. Hi, Susan. Well, today we're really excited to have Andy Carey, Director of Wine and Spirits Education Content from the Constellation Academy at Constellation Brands. Now, Constellation Brands produces some of the world's most iconic wine, spirits, and beer brands, including Robert Mondavi Winery, The Prisoner Wine Company, Kim Crawford, High West Whiskey, Svetka Vodka, and Corona Beer, just to name a few. Constellation Brands provides brand education and industry learning opportunities for their sales organization, as well as as their commercial partners. They want to ensure that everyone that talks about their brands from internal personnel to their wholesalers and retailers helps build these brands while expanding distribution and ultimately selling these products to consumers. Welcome, Andy. Hi, I'm so happy to be with you two today. Oh, Angelie and I are so glad you could join us. Start off by telling us a little bit about your background and your role at Constellation Brands. Okay, great. So um, as you just said, I'm currently the Director of Wine and Spirits Education Content at uh, Constellation Brands, a member of the Constellation Academy, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, I've been with the group for, well, I should say I've been with the organization for nine years. I just celebrated my nine-year anniversary, and I've had three roles within Constellation Brands in the past nine years. I came in on the marketing team, Um, I led the trade marketing team for a couple of years and then joined Constellation Academy just about two years ago. But all in all, if I, you know, could wrap up my career in two words, I'd like to say that I'm a brand builder. Ultimately, I think that my role has been um, to extend the brand's message and parlay a brand's aesthetic across a multitude of consumer touch points and trade touch points to essentially bring a brand to life. Thank you, Andy. You know, I think describing yourself as a brand builder is really an important one when you're looking at the communications and the training role that you play. And and, uh, Angeline and I are really looking forward to learning more about what you're doing together in Constellation Academy. Yes. Thank you again for taking the time to chat with us today and congratulations on your nine years at Constellation. Could you tell us all a little bit more about Constellation Academy? Sure, absolutely. So Constellation Academy um, in its current iteration is just a couple of years old. However, it's the evolution of a group that was formed many years ago within Constellation Brands. They were the Constellation Academy of Wine. And of course, (laughs) over the course of time, as Constellation brought more spirits brands into our portfolio, it was important to drop the wine only and become Constellation Academy. Um, We are a really interesting group of individuals. We're small but mighty. Collectively, we have more than 100 years in this industry. Wow. Uh, Yeah, we range from, our backgrounds range from marketing to education to sales and to IT. Imagine that, right? You're Um, (laughs) all-encompassing. What we all bring is industry expertise, um, personal experience, personal strengths, um, and a common passion for the category, Um, you know, and We'll probably talk more about this, but we have the great privilege of working in an industry that is just rich with history and story and appeal, right? Not to say that, you know, facial tissues (laughs) lack appeal, but, you know, there's something about wine and spirits. When people talk talk to me and ask me what I do, they're like, ooh, can we get samples? You know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and of course, I always hope that I'm talking to somebody who works for, I don't know, Louis Vuitton. It's like, oh, can I get a sample? (laughs) um, Yeah, so we bring, we bring, we bring passion and we bring focus. 
we bring commitment and Constellation Academy is actually an entity within the sales enablement team at Constellation Brands. And what does that mean? That means that we are not necessarily support staff, but we are partners with our sales organization, enabling them to get the tools to do their jobs best. So how does the work you're doing then really align with the overarching vision and strategy of Constellation Brands? Constellation Brands is completely committed to the development of their employees. So uh, individual development is mm -hmm. a priority. Education is a big priority. General education, industry education, things that allow us to better ourselves. There are a tremendous amount of leadership skills initiatives, and we have um, recently standing up business resource groups where like-minded people uh, come together for their own enrichment and growth in the company. So Constellation Brands is committed to us as employees, and the education part of Constellation Academy falls right into that, right? Constellation Brands creates distinctive brands and products that deliver exceptional consumer experiences. And part of that is letting folks know everything that is distinctive about those brands, the things that are unique about those products, all that comes through an education lens. As learning and development professionals, we sometimes have a really narrow view of what is meant by a brand. So can you talk to us about how the concept of brand is, used, is viewed inside of Constellation? Because you really you know, have all of these iconic brands amongst your organization. Sure. I could talk about uh, what brand means to Constellation Brands, but I can more importantly talk about what brands mean to me. Yeah. So first, of, first and foremost, I, I'm a believer that... Constellation Brands and any other organization, uh, we own products, we own glass, we own labels, we own shippers, we own juice, <laughs> um, we own the things that go in the bottle, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe that brands are owned by our consumers, right? Because brands, brands live in the hearts and minds of our consumers. You know, they are, they are, they have an affinity toward the product. They are drawn to the packaging, um, but they're inspired by the messaging because we craft all of that marketing messaging to tap into consumer insights and consumer desires and needs. But um, when it comes to a brand, I believe that consumers own brands. You know, I own my favorite brands. You own your favorite brands because they reside in your home. Right. They live on your shelf and ultimately they become part of. That is so true and such yeah. a such an interesting way to look at that. Um, Definitely. That's a great point. I love that. <laughs> so with that in mind, how important is it for everyone within your organization to know the big picture when it comes to the iconic brands you produce? So about these brands? It is paramount that everybody speaks the same language, that everything that we put forth, either com consumer facing or commercial facing, uh, has the same aesthetic of the brand. No matter where you go, if it's, you know, opening up your phone and seeing some digital advertising or walking into the store and seeing some merchandising material or having a conversation with uh, a bartender or a waiter, at Tableside, and they're talking about our brands, they need to talk the same language that the consumer's been exposed to all across their journey. So taking that into an education space, it is paramount that the sales organization is comfortable with the words that have been selected, you know, comfortable mm -hmm. with the brand story, comfortable in parlaying the brand essence to the people that they're making presentation to, to their commercial partners, to retailers. So they in turn can pick up those sound bites, can pick up those brand stories and carry them forward. Again, ultimately, it starts with consumer insight. It goes through a bunch of different filters. It ends up perhaps in different media, but it all ends up where it needs to, which is the consumer making a choice about a brand that they are interested in that they try, and that ultimately that they come to love and call their own. Wow. So it's, it's really about empowering your audience to be ambassadors for the brand than for your consumers. Absolutely. That's the perfect word for it. Yeah. 
Wow. So if we look at the specific courses you're creating, how critical is it then that the brand essence is embedded into those learning experiences? And in what ways do you do that? No, that's tremendously important. Um, it's funny because as we go through the development of all the Constellation Academy education material, there are two brands we are trying to build. First and foremost is Constellation Academy. As I said, we're a relatively new group or a, re, a, a repackaged group in the organization. So I really want to work with my peers to create um create an entity that mm -hmm. the sales organization knows and trusts. They see our Constellation Academy logo and the overarching design of the material that we put out. And they're like, oh, right, that's the team of experts in communication and education in the organization is going to tell me what I need to know. So important that we establish ourselves and build ourselves out as a brand. But then more importantly is the need to um, express all of our individual brands in their individual way. So, um, and as you know, Angeline, because we've worked so closely this mm -hmm. over the course of uh, more than a year now and building out some pretty impressive material, um, we are, we try to be really consistent with the formatting of the education material. You know, mm -hmm. there's a theme that we follow. Um, I'm really big on the template, right? Information yes. goes here, information goes here, information goes here. But the way we package it up um, to ensure that it looks like the brand that we're talking about, that a Kim Crawford brand module is delivering the same type of content in roughly the same order as the Rafino brand module, but Kim Crawford looks like Kim Crawford. Mm -hmm. And Rafino looks like it's Rafino. And so, therefore, that continues to reinforce the um, overarching look and feel and the essence and the personality, if you will, of each brand. Yeah. So, uh, talking a little bit about the brand modules we're creating, um, they really make a strong impact in the brand stories. And I think that's one of the first things that we talk about in these modules. Could you share a little bit about how that story really works to inspire um, the audience? Oh my God, you know, wine and spirits, we, uh, we have the great, the great privilege or the great luxury of being brands that are built in story. Um, not to not to dismiss the importance of other brands out there, but in wine and spirit, in wine and spirits, we are just rich in lore and story and passion and legacy and frankly art. I mean, the creation of wine and the production of spirits is an art form. It's a craft, and the people who make it are craftsmen and artisans. So, therefore, telling a brand story um, is critical. It, it makes the difference. You know, Sauvignon Blanc is Sauvignon Blanc, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, what goes into a bottle of Kim Crawford, you know, the story of the brand founder, the, the interesting stories about New Zealand and the New Zealand landscape, um, the advertising and the new communications platform that the brand has recently launched that really taps into the insights and desires of the consumer. Um, that makes for some good storytelling. Absolutely. I'm constantly reminded of the Robert Mondavi story. And, um, you know, it immediately makes you want to just go out and buy a bottle and try a glass and feel like you're drinking a part of that that story, honestly. So right, right. You know, I, um, I, I agree with you, Angeline. I mean, just having watched some of these modules, you know, you do get a sense of um, – understanding of not just Constellation brands, but these individual um, uh, products, and you feel a connection to them as a consumer. And if that's being you know, conveyed to the people who are distributing this and, and selling it, it's definitely being conveyed then to the end, end user like us. And that makes us want to feel like those brand ambassadors you were talking about. Absolutely. You know, and you bring up Robert Mondavi, and it's one of, to me, one of our um, most, most wonderful stories of history. I mean, Mr. Mondavi pretty much put Napa Valley on the map. Right. And mm -hmm. he's he's known for that um, and known for the art of winemaking. And but more importantly, known for um, known for knowing what makes what, what consumers want, you know. And so there are multiple tiers of wines that bear the name Robert Mondavi in a certain instance. And it's super important to be able to tell the story, three separate stories of wines that ladder back to this great master. Um, but 
maintain the integrity of each individual brand, each individual label. Um, and, you know, to your point, Susan, as a brand ambassador, you want to feel attached to things. Right. I want to be part of history. So first I need to know the history so that I can claim my space in the history and then therefore the future of these yeah, brands. Absolutely. So let's switch gears and talk about how you're educating non-employees. So your wholesalers and your retailers, um, what types of efforts are you making with them and why? Uh, frankly, we're making the same efforts that we are with our internal sales organization. And again, I referred to them before um, in an earlier segment. Uh, I call them our partners because they are, um, because of the way our business is structured. Um, our distributor network are, in fact, our partners. And then ultimately, the retailer, the um, restaurateur, the sommelier, the bartender and server, they're all our partners in selling these beautiful wines and spirits to the consumer. So I don't view them much differently than I view our own internal sales organization. There are bits and pieces that we don't put out to the, gen, you know, the general audience, right, to mm -hmm. the population at mm -hmm. large. There are some things that should be kept, you know, amongst family, if you will, some precious data or, you know, some, uh, some commercial strategies that are meant for our ears only. But beyond that, the story is the same because mm -hmm. the consistency of the story is what's important. And again, a brand ambassador is just that. Anybody who represents our brands in an outbound manner is a brand ambassador. They should be armed with the same information, the consistently same information. And they should be delighted by the story that, that we're telling and the information that we're sharing. Right. So, so even though they're not employees, you, they still deliver, they still receive the same type of learning experiences in the format that you're delivering them to your internal audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. They have access to, in fact, um, the reason that we built a brand new learning management system, our most recent Constellation Academy LMS, was to enable us to invite in non-employees to access the education in the very same environment. So not only are the brand modules a representative of Constellation Academy, but the space in which they learn is, um, and they all have the same experience. You know, again, certain things that are kept for just us, but for the most part, um, the experience is the same, you know, and uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is the most recent uptick in um, key account participants and staff at stores in wait staff in bars and restaurants. They're starting to come in and learn with us um, at a higher rate. You know, it was it was something that was a it was a nice to have but not a must have at the very beginning but now it's becoming um you know a tremendous value add that we offer to those accounts um, and so what do you think shifted that they became more engaged now uh because our sales organization and our distributor partners have spoken so highly about the education they've experienced it firsthand they spent a year in the LMS, um, and we've had some incredible numbers. Uh, I'll say before I got on the chat with you, I looked up and realized that in terms of our internal sales organization, we have 96% compliance with taking these modules, which is a wow. outstanding number. Yeah, that's and I huge. venture to guess that the 4% that haven't engaged yet are probably my own team. <laughs> 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 and we'll have to talk about that another time, mostly me. Honestly, right. I feel like I can't take the courses because I wrote the courses. I'll definitely get 100 on all the tests. Right, I mean, you've um, been testing and, them, so. <laughs> exactly, I've done my due diligence in creating them, but yeah. um, I, I joke about that. But seriously, 96% 96 compliance with our internal organization is pretty amazing. Wow. Um, fantastic. We've actually, you know, one of the, to me, one of the, the best things I ever heard was like uh, sales, a sales rep saying, this is the best information we have ever seen. Now, I have to admit, while I agree, it's the best format of the information that they've ever <laughs> seen, um, none of the information is unique to me and my team. Right. We curate information that has been prepared by the marketing team. So we have poured through, you know, tons and tons of PowerPoint presentations and other bits and bobs of information and have curated the best, most succinct story 
and information about the brand and packaged it up as we've discussed in this beautiful manner. Mm -hmm. um, so sales is like, this is the greatest thing we've ever seen. And I'm like, well, you've seen it a hundred times, just in different forms. So, right. um, so they're a big advocate of the work though. And um, as you know, Angeline, we've just recently taken the brand education modules and converted them into PowerPoint presentations so that they can take the best of what they've learned and include them into sales presentations. So Wow. So they're yeah, so they can even carry all of that content with them and become the educators themselves. Absolutely. And that's why suddenly there's an uptick on interest on the account side on bars and restaurants and retailers saying, hey, you know, we've heard some good things about this. So we created an avenue by which they can come in and self-register. Um, they identify the account that they're with and they're able to take courses. Um, they tend to focus a little bit more on the industry education courses, but then, you know, as a curiosity, they'll delve into our brand courses as well and they get the story and mm -hmm. that's become, you know, again, it's a, it's a great value add. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, and we're increasing our um, engagement on the LMS. For sure. And, and as like, as I'm hearing you talk, it's kind of, yes, your team might not be uniquely creating some of this content for the brand modules, but that's kind of a learning and development professional superpower is you <laughs> grab the right information and you present it in a format that's going to be, you know, inspiring your aud audience, motivating them and helping them to retain the information because ultimately you need to get them excited about it. Right. So that, Absolutely. so they want to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Every day I put on my cape. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the industry education side. How, how does the industry education that you guys do at Constellation Academy impact the Constellation brand? Like your, uh, your internal organization's brand? Because really that's your education that you're delivering and making sure everyone's knowledgeable on this, um, on this topic. Right, right. You know, uh, there's a line. I, I just looked over at a piece of paper that I printed out in preparation of this call that I haven't been reading, so I'll fess up to that. But there's a line here that jumps off at me. Everything we do is meant to inspire and preserve the passion of the wine and spirits culture. You know, and I made reference mm -hmm. to that earlier, but that's that, that's just it. It starts with this industry. Right. It starts with feeling comfortable talking about wine as much as it is, you know, we have the great luxury of being such a provocative and attractive type of industry. There comes with it a little intimidation when you start, right? Like, ooh, wine, I'll never be able to talk about that. I don't even know how to open a bottle. I don't even know how to read a label. What am I supposed to do? And that's not just the consumer talking. Those are people who are starting out in their career in this industry. So industry education is a huge part of, um, of the learning management system. We have an entire section dedicated to industry education. Um, as you know, Angeline, we just recently created the Foundation of Spirits Industry mm -hmm. Education module, which was uh, a huge, a huge pet project um, because I come from the spirits world primarily. I didn't get into wine or to the wine side of the business until nine years ago when I joined Constellation. Um, you know, being able to talk about spirits, the, the, the entire category of distilled spirits, you know, to look back at the history, which is rich and interesting, um, to talk about the different types, like what's the difference between whiskey and scotch, right? It, there is a difference and you've got mm -hmm. to read about it. Right. Um, <laughs> what's the difference between gin and vodka? They look awfully close, you know, what's the difference? So, um, the the ability to to help the wait staff and the server and the you know the guy who's working behind the counter at the retail store answer these questions giving them insights into the category at large is uh is important it's truly important um and so i love that side of the projects we've been working on as well it's not just the brands but it is the category at large Absolutely. And it really builds confidence in those learners and builds credibility then in your organization because, you know, they're able to talk, um, you know, smart about this, about this information. Absolutely. They do look to Constellation Brands to be um, an authority. 
Mm -hmm. We are. We are an authority. We have some of the most beautiful, iconic brand names to talk about. But, you know, we also have an incredible, um, incredibly smart, incredibly savvy uh, Mm -hmm. sales organization. Our marketing organization is chock full of really great individuals who have spent, you know, their careers honing in on their craft. Well, Andy, I want to thank you so much for sharing these insights with us. Um, I truly, I just love working with you and I'm so excited that we had this opportunity to share with everyone the incredible training and education you're doing at Constellation. Um, But before we wrap up, can you tell us what's next for Constellation Academy? Oh yeah. What's next? So much. So much more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, one of the, one of the, one of the first things that's next is, um, Going back and taking a look at the modules that have been created and refreshing them, by that I mean, you know, we include a lot of selling data. We include a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of data and Mm -hmm. category data, selling data, and, you know, that data changes sometimes by sometimes by the minute, but at the very least, you know, over the course of, over the course of year, the numbers change um, and our numbers continue to obviously improve. So it's important to go back in and refresh those brand modules to keep them current. I think that's a really big, important um, thing to point out is that the stories don't change, the history doesn't change, but the data changes. And so um, that's uh, something that's going to be a forever ongoing project. Um, In addition to that, we are always launching um, uh, new brands, either extensions to existing brands, new varietals, uh, some packaging reformat. Um, so it's important to keep that information in the LMS fresh and updated. Um, over the course of time, there may be some new to world brands that need to be um, absolutely, we need to provide some education on that because if it's new to world, it doesn't have much history so therefore the story and the insights behind it and the creation of are truly important to share with our organization and then of course you know um we are starting to look at larger strategic initiatives as uh, an avenue of education Um, as the company goes through some changes, it may be important to share why those changes are happening and to use education as a means to communicate that in addition to corporate communications and all the other ways that information is shared is just the icing on the cake. Um, So, and the importance of keeping our sales organization engaged and involved and informed um, is critical. And so we've got a lot of stuff. I've got, we've got a long future together. <laughs> You're telling me that's a lot there. I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> that, that is a lot. Thank Ooh. you so much, Andy. Boy, you can yeah. definitely tell the passion that you have yes. for this kind of communications and training. And it definitely comes through in everything that you and your team uh, do. And, and we're just delighted to have spent this time with you to, to learn a little bit more about Constellation Brands and, and what you're doing at Constellation Academy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Angelie and Andy shared so many great insights with us. What are some of your takeaways from our discussion with her? She did. I just loved hearing from her. Um, She has such a passion for what she does, and she really Mm -hmm. just inspires everyone she works with. I mean, she certainly inspires me, so (laughs) it was great to talk with her. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is really that the story matters. So the way she talked about how brands become a part of who we are and we need to empower whomever we're training or talking to about those brands to really be ambassadors for them um, and finding a way to connect with that audience and, and help them become a part of the story is, is really just a, a huge part of, of building brands. Um, and I also, I really loved how she talked about the importance of curating the right content. So mm-hmm. finding that right content and making sure we're presenting it to the learning audience in a way that connects with them and makes it easy to digest and um, really engages them. I love how she referred to herself and her team as brand builders. Talk a little bit about how you embed a client's brand in learning experiences that you design at DaVinci and and maybe share what some of the best practices are in doing that. Absolutely. So um, we do a few things to make sure we're capturing the client's brand in our learning solution. So first and foremost, um, our team of creative content designers will review and leverage the client's brand standards, and they then create a template or a style guide for the solution we're creating. So whether that's an e-learning program, a classroom training, an educational website video, even a performance support tool. 
they make sure visually we're aligning with the brand through our colors, fonts, graphical treatments, and image selections. And honestly, Susan, they take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. They are so, they're so Beautiful. talented. <laughs> and I'm constantly amazed at how they can bring a client's brand to life in e-learning and really in all the types of learning experiences we create. And then from an instructional design and writing standpoint, we really study the tone of voice of a client's brand to make sure we're embodying the spirit of it. Um, And we do this through reviewing a formal tone of voice document, if one exists, and we consider the client's mission, vision, and goals. Um, We also take time to look uh, to closely analyze who the learner is and their perceptions. So how they perceive the organization and how they perceive themselves within it. So what role do they play? Uh, And lastly, we look at what motivates them or their reason to believe that what they're learning is important, which uh, which ultimately influences the writing style. Um, So I think all of these things really come together to play a part in helping to shape a learning experience that's not only cohesive, but in alignment with a brand. Well, we're definitely looking forward to seeing more of what you and your team do with the Constellation Academy team. And it was really great having you with us today. And we're looking forward to having you back on the Powered by Learning podcast. And of course, many, many thanks to Andy Carey of Constellation Brands for joining us today. Didn't she do a great job, Angeline? She did. She did. And thanks, Susan, for for letting me join in today. Oh, anytime. Thank you. You can learn more about Constellation Brands at cbbrands.com. And if you have any questions about what we talked about today, You can also reach out to us on DaVinci's social channels through our website, davinci.com, or by emailing us at poweredbylearning at davinci.com. Powered by Learning is brought to you by DaVinci Interactive. For more than 25 years, DaVinci has provided custom learning solutions to government agencies, corporations, medical education and certification organizations, and educational content providers. We collaborate with our clients to bring order and clarity to content and technology. Learn more at DaVinci.com.